Today I'm joined by Ricardo Tahar from Flat 101 and he shares his experience and all the major pitfalls he came across while running Ciro projects at his Spanish web agency that he founded back in 2013. My name is Guido Jansen and welcome to Ciro Cafe, the award-winning podcast where I show you the behind the scenes of optimization teams and talk with their specialists about data and human-driven optimization. My goal with the Zero Cafe podcast is to spread a mindset of experimentation and validation and to improve quality standards in digital marketing. You can be an enormous help reaching this goal by sharing this episode or any other episode with your colleagues. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you are by checking this in your podcast. It really means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. In case you missed the previous episode, last week I spoke with Lisanne Maatman and Dumki de Wilde from that agency, and we learned about how you can still continue running online experiments without relying on browsers to accept cookies. Besides that, I also hosted a session at Digital Lead Day, where I spoke with Abby Howe and Craig Sullivan about how you can keep learning and developing as a zero professional. You can listen to both of these on the Shiro Cafe website or in the podcast app you are listening with right now. This episode of Shiro Cafe is again made possible by our partners Convert.com, Content Square, Online Influence Institute, Sidespect and Online Dialogue. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 40. Ricardo, thanks so much for joining me on the show. And um, yeah, like with all my guests, I'd love to start with getting to know you a bit more. So let's get started with how you got involved with Zero. Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much uh, for having me here. And and how how this thing started? Oof, let me think. I think it was 20, 22 or twenty three years ago, while I was studying laws in the in the in the university, and I discovered the internet. You know, in the in the <laughs> in the in the late 90s yeah so so i really was involved in all some artistic stuff like drawing or playing with photoshop all this kind of stuff and i discovered that i can be one person that makes websites you know uh, so i started making websites for free at the beginning and and then i discovered that some people thought that was a good idea to pay me for it so so I moved into the business and I started working doing this this kind of stuff in my first in my first visit car I think uh, I was webmaster you know the guy that does everything around a, a, a website so that's that's how how I started and and I moved in in my next movements I moved through UX and analytics and finally into business and that's how I I have the the whole uh, the whole thing you know, the, the analytics part, the UX part, and the business part that makes uh, the CRO make sense. And, and so uh, you currently uh, own the, car, uh, the company Flats uh, 101? Yes, that's my company, yes. So what do you guys do? B- not only CRO, right? You, you do the whole package. <laughs> no. Well, well, I, I always say that we that we, we are a company with, with, with seven years in the market. We were born in, in, in 2013. And, and, and I always say that we face two kind of different challenges. Uh, the first one is when a company comes to us and wants to build a digital experience, so focused on conversion, you know, e-commerce, uh, user flows, uh, lead generation, this kind of stuff. We don't, we don't do and we don't work for social media, branding, all, all this kind of stuff. This is the first challenge. People that want to build a very re, a very good ex- digital experience for, for converting. And the and the other and the other kind of projects is when some companies come with digital or, or digital services or digital products and they are not working the way they thought. So they say, hey, I have here a problem. I don't know where is the problem. So please help me to fix all this stuff. And let's make it work. You know, sometimes it's an e-commerce, sometimes it's media. Yeah. It uh, it doesn't matter. But they are not uh, achieving the goals they have for for the for the digital business, and that's why they 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 come to us. These are the the two kind of projects we work. And and how, how was your business, or maybe even your your client business? How was it impacted by well, basically twenty twenty? Well, well, here we are in Spain, so yeah. you know that Spain has a very. Uh, hard situation uh, 
across the, the pandemic, of course. I think we are lucky because all of our clients are still our clients. We, we, we don't have any loss. Uh, but the problem is that the conditions of your work have changed a lot mm -hmm. uh, in, in financial terms, in negotiation, in, in all these parts of, 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 of your relation with your clients. But to be, to be honest, in these last months, uh, just uh, facing uh, 2021, we are receiving now a lot of uh, RFPs, uh, requests, uh, all this kind of stuff. Because I think that here, now every company has a very clear vision that really needs to be in a digital scenario. You know, they, they really need, not only need to, 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 to be there, but also to be in a very good way. Yeah. Because if you want to be competitive right now, it's not enough just having an e-commerce or it's not enough just having a website or an application. You really need to be really good at what you do. Because if we take a look at the, at the data we have uh, about conversion rates, uh, incomes, all this kind of stuff, people who really care two or three years ago of building very good digital products or very good digital services, they are uh, they are achieving a very very uh, high increase in their business objectives in digital. So it's it's a little bit complicated. You have to be in a mindset that allows you to balance, you know, because now I have some information. Maybe in two days I have a completely different information, so I have to adapt. But the best part of this situation is that almost every company almost every individual now it's very uh, focused on the internet and on the uh, on being the digital scenario in a very good way yeah so that's something in the theory that's something good for us the problem here in spain is that we have almost a quarter of all companies with serious risk of disappearing or with serious risk of very uh, hard financial injuries. Yeah, and it's always hard for those people uh, that cannot move that fast, right? Or the companies that cannot move that fast yeah. towards digital. But yeah, it, it sounds very familiar that um, the part of the businesses uh, that are that were already uh, in online, uh, they are flying now. Uh, and they they double or even even triple or even more uh, times their revenue. There are also companies that struggle even when they were uh, online but if they are in, in a business that was typically about uh, doing doing business doing face-to-face -face business like meeting spaces or doing uh, of course uh, the whole uh, uh, food sector restaurants is uh, very difficult um, um, but there are in general i think there are a lot of opportunities for our business being in digital commerce the sector as, as a whole has grown uh, a lot the last couple of uh, months yeah i think so uh, our problem is that most of the uh, economy of Spain, it's based on tourism. So that's uh, so that's very hard for a lot of companies here to handle mm -hmm. because it's a very hard situation because we don't have tourists right now. Yeah, exactly. So so almost 20% of our whole economy, it's uh, it's dependent on tourism. So that's... Uh, that's a big hit. That's not so nice right now. Yeah. So do you, do you also see then uh, companies focusing more on doing business across the borders because they, they want to get the business from somewhere else or...? Yes, Yes, but, but but I think this is something that comes uh, for the for the last years, maybe. I mean, Spain is typically exporting professionals. You know, a lot of people that that, that is good here uh, finally uh, works abroad in other country, in Europe, or even in, in America or in Asia. But now a uh, lot of people is moving through digital, and also uh, it's very focused on uh, partnerships with other companies. Uh, outside and and now it's something curious because in the last uh, in the last weeks there have been uh, several companies outside of Spain that have bought companies uh, from Spain. The last one was a Swedish, I think it was a Swedish venture capital company that has bought the main uh, uh, the main internet portal we have here about renting houses yeah. or selling houses that it's called idealista it was it was about two weeks ago by a by, by a swedish venture capital i think so yes uh, now it's like is is now it's like everybody is trying to do different things in order to achieve different goals and i think that's uh, that's good but of course the companies that has a very um, 
classical mindset, you know what I mean? They are going to suffer a lot in this time, yeah. but not only in Spain, but worldwide. Fightspec offers a worldwide unique A-B testing, personalization and product recommendation solution. Sidespec works service side without any tags or scripts, which guarantees an optimal performance. The Sidespec solution eliminates delays and the chance of any flickering effects. And this approach also ensures that the current and future browser security rules like ITP and ETP don't make an impact on your A-B testing and personalizations. For more info, visit sidespec.com. During this time, you thought, let's, let's publish another book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it, so it's it's your second book, right? Uh, on on zero that you uh, that you published. Yeah. So what are these about? I have both here. So the 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 story behind this uh, the last book is the last time I was in Madrid before the lockdown, yeah. before the national lockdown. The last time I was in Madrid was for presenting the book, <laughs> and it was the day, and it was the day that things were completely insane yeah. about COVID and coronavirus. So so it was expected to be. Uh, 200 people event and finally we were i think 30 or 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 40 but that that was my last trip and 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 this is the this is the second one it's a please don't look at the cover <laughs> <laughs> and this is the second one this is this is called in 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 english it's it's a professional CRO strategics and tactics to to boost uh, your digital products conversion And this is the first one that was two years ago that it's just called uh, CRO, uh, Design and Development of Digital Business. Okay. So now so now is the second one. It's just, a, it's just an advanced book, but for writing an advanced book, I need the, the, the step before. You know, and the step before was two years ago when, yeah. when, when I published the, the first one. It's just a book about basics. And when you have... Uh, It worked really well, much more than the, than, than than I expected, and also the the company that published the book expect, expected. And now uh, we focus on being just more professional, just uh, talking about tools, how to work with the SPA with single page applications, how to how how to develop your own CRO methodology, uh, knowing the which ones are working now in the market, how to work with digital analytics in the quantitative and qualitative way which are the main roles and functions of a CRO lead, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so, so this one is much more advanced. Uh, well, uh, it's in the market and it's working nice besides of the, <laughs> uh, of the situation we're living in. Exactly. So, and, and that's, of course, why I wanted to talk to you. Because currently, the books are in Spanish only, right? Yes. Are, are there any plans for publishing it in English? Well, but I think, but I think that in English, you have uh, tons yeah. of, of things to read about CRO. Maybe there are not so much books about a specific CRO because, of course, you can find years ago you have always be testing or, or all this kind of stuff. That it's very good. But the problem in 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 my not only in my country, also in America and, mm -hmm. and, and other countries, is that we don't have any kind of material in Spanish. Yeah. You know? So we always have to read in English, we always have to translate. That's why this company uh, told told with me, hey, do you want to write a book about CRO in Spanish? But I think there are no plans to, to publish in English. But yeah. we as a company and me as an author, yes, we are publishing some things in English. Uh, the, the last was in May. We published in our website a complete study of almost 150 pages, maybe, in English about how COVID uh, was changing the digital business here in Spain. Yeah. Completely full with data about conversion rates, Uh, what kind of revenue each company is having depending on the on the kind of business that they are running, all this kind of stuff. So we did a set of, I think it was 600 interviews with people just to identify how their behavior has is changing in Spain. And you have it in Spanish and you have it also in, in English. Yeah, I saw it on your website. So it's, it's still available, right? So yes. people can still download that. So we can link to that in the, in the show notes. But I, I still wanted to talk to you about the book because um, not everyone uh, obviously speaks Spanish or this podcast is perfect for you <laughs> to, to explain what your book is about in, uh, to, to an English audience. As, as a short summary, 
uh, and uh, of course, uh, as as a motivation for people to start learning Spanish. <laughs> well, well, well. Thank you, thank you. I w- <laughs> well, it's a it's a good it's a good idea to start speaking Spanish within this book. Exactly. Maybe it's uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the the book won't teach you how to ask for a beer or for food, but uh, you will know a lot for for of of zero. That's of course is secondary to our zero work. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> I. I it 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 was a it was a hard challenge because uh, you know when when they say to me can you write this book the first the first thing that comes to my mind was okay who's the reader of this book who's who's the who's the people who's going to read this book so the first one is completely oriented to people that really don't know so much about CRO it's people that is just uh, investigating they know it exists but they don't really know what it is or how it can be used in a company. And the second one is just a, a focus on the professionals and people that is working in mar- digital marketing and they, and they really want to move to CRO or people that is just beginning with CRO. So I started what, what I think is the, is, the, is the core thing in CRO, that it's methodology. You cannot, you never cannot uh, uh, leave the responsibility of a project to the talent of only one person. So you really need a system. So you need a system and you really need to build your own system because not all business models work the same. Yeah. So things that work for you, if you are in retailing or you are selling, I don't know, uh, food for pets, they can work, but but they, uh, they won't work if you are working for an insurance company or a bank. So, so I'm moving to methodology as the as the key aspect of the of the CRO. So I started talking about the methodologies that now we have. Uh, of course, CXL has uh, their methodology, also wider funnel, all this kind of stuff. So I talk about them, and then I talk about uh, the methodology I've been building in the last ten years. I think. So can you take us take us through that a bit? So, if, for example, if you, if you uh, encounter uh, a new client. Uh, with an with an average uh, kind of uh, budget that you uh, see out there, how, how do you approach it? How do you start building uh, that uh, on that me- methodology? Well, I think I think a very important thing is just the uh, not only the budget, also the kind of digital maturity the organization has. Yeah. So this is something. This is something I specifically write and put into our framework. This is something for me. It's something critical. Uh, you really need to know if you are working with a client that has a high level of, of digital maturity or a low one. Because in the high one, of course, we talk about tools like Content Square or maybe well, Kicktail now it's Content, Content Square or, or T-Leaf or this kind of stuff. And you are working, at, I'm sure you will work with uh, data scientists, a lot of uh, probabilistic methods, etc. Et yeah. But if you are working with a low maturity, uh, in, we are talking about digital. If, if, if you are working with a low digital maturity company, you have to do more simple things. You know, you have to, you have to be like a teacher. So you have to start with simple things and let them uh, understand that simple movements can allow us to achieve uh, important goals and then move uh, across uh, more difficult ones you know what i mean so 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 i i define three kinds of companies the most uh, mature one that has a specific a specific teams has a lot of budget a lot of tools a very complex uh, a stack you know a very complex yeah. stack of, of technology and people the the intermediate one is the is is typically it's a company that that it's running business in digital for the last three or four years, things are growing, things are going okay, and they want to do the next step. They want to be more professional, so they have some they have some boundaries, and and you are the one that it's going to help them to 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 break those those boundaries because they don't have enough knowledge. They don't know what kind of technology they have to choose, or they don't know how to play with optimizely or with. Or, all kind of stuff, and you have the, the the basic ones, the companies that really don't have uh, resources in, in in CRO, but they want to boost uh, the the results. So you have to start working in 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 what I call the 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 hygienic part. You know, you have to have all your basics 
very well done. Yeah. So please don't focus on the chatbot or in artificial intelligence. Don't focus on that if your information architecture uh, doesn't allow people to find a product. Exactly. Yeah. So so we work in those three levels. It's same methodology, two alpha steps, but three kind three types, but three types depending on the depending on the on the company in order to be able to 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 make your world the best thing in each company. Marketing budgets have suffered and the share for A-B testing has been impacted too. If you want to keep testing to enterprise standards but save 80% on your annual contract, you can consider Convert.com. With their summer release, you can take advantage of full stack and hybrid features, strong privacy compliance, no blink, and enterprise-grade security. Feel good about your smart business decision. Invest what you save back in your zero program. Check out www.convert.com slash 2020. Let's, for example, take the, the middle one, the intermediate uh, one. So how, how would you start there? How do you start implementing better zero practices there? Okay, we always do, uh, the first step for us is, is uh, it's an inception. So we really need to understand the business model of each company because Alpha Two companies seem to be very similar. They never are so similar. So so that's why you really need to understand the business model. So to understand business model, you really need to know which is the which is the client of that, of that company, which is the client. And of course, please show me your data. I need to, to understand your, your business, but of course, I really need uh, to, to, to see and to understand your data how implementation has been done, yeah. what ca- what kind of KPIs or metrics are you measuring and why, which is your historic as a digital business, how were the results two years ago, three years ago, where do you want to move the next year, and then please tell me about your technological stuff, which is your CMS, uh, which version, do you have any plans to move to other CMS, what other technologies are you using day by day, like i don't know like salesforce or like mailchimp which is your marketing automation tools how you how do you plan your digital analysis what kind of actions do you do all this kind of stuff is for us is critical in the first part how do you decide where to start i mean those are a lot of things yes. uh, that you can that you can start working on uh, assuming they don't give you a limited budget, sure, <laughs> you have to you have to start you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so so how do you do that? We have a, we, the first step is we do an audit. So depending on the on the sector of the company, we have like a like a checklist. You know, so we always see if if some things are running properly or not. It's like a check. So we check almost. 150, 170 things, depending on the type of, of, of business you are working for. Yep. So we do this check. And, and if we find a lot of pitfalls or, 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 or a lot of problems, then we move to uh, order in a backlog from the, from the most uh, important thing because it's urgent and it's, uh, and it's important yep. and the least one. And then we move into uh, let's propose what kind of things we can do to fix this. And then we build a backlog and then we start the conversation with our client. I always say that uh, we don't work for our clients, that we work with our clients. I think, I think that CRO is not possible if you, have the, if you don't have the confidence and if you don't have a very good relation with your client because you really need to understand the business. I think that's the key part. So we, we talk about uh, Shiro, obviously, um, but do you also usually are the person that can implement those kind of things on the website? Are you also the web developer uh, for those clients? Yes, we, we, I know that a lot of people uh, don't do that kind of stuff, but uh, I think we decide maybe in the beginning, uh, seven years ago, that we will be a, a full stack uh, company. So we, so, we, so we do both parts, also, also implementation and the technical part, yeah. So we are in partnership with several companies of tools like Content Square or mm-hmm. like Google Optimize or Target, all this kind of stuff. And we do the strategic part. It's, it's more conceptual, more, more, more related with UX, UI and all these kind of things, but also the, 
the, the technical part. I think that's important because depending on the maturity, uh, you cannot, uh, you cannot. Uh, some companies are not able to do things if you are not able to do that for them. If you look across your uh, your client portfolio, what, what would you say uh, for, for when you come to a new client? Um, uh, what were the most common problems that they have? The most common challenges that they have uh, with uh, with zero or the growth in general? I think uh, oof, uh, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> but I think that there are very typical ones, and I think it, it this is uh, worldwide. I mean, the first one right now for me it's how people uh, try to adapt digital experience to mobile. Here, here there are. Here there are a lot of pitfalls because uh, mobile navigation is very complex. You can use an iPhone, of course, but also you can use a very uh, simple device uh, that has not uh, so much uh, capabilities as an iPhone. Yep. So the first pitfall is the, it's how uh, mobile is performing. Very poor performance in general, in general, very poor performance. And that's why, because companies don't make themselves a, 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 a question uh, that is, hey, this is my digital experience in desktop, but I also have to think that how is my digital experience for mobile? Because probably it's the same guy, it's the same people that is using digital uh, experiences, but it's not in the same context and not the same needs and not the same processes. And of course, now I'm here in a table, I have my credit card, I have my books, I have everything. But if I'm, if I'm using mobile, probably my context is completely different. Of course, I can be at home. Exactly. And usually the, the people that work on the website, they, they use a desktop screen, right? Yes. Which makes sense if you work on the website, but then you completely miss the whole mobile experience. Yeah, I think, I think the companies has to start thinking not desktop or mobile. They have to start thinking in digital experiences. And that also means that you have to understand that your client, of course, is visiting your website or even using your applications, but also is going to your stores and also is talking with people that it's inside the stores and also is reading about you in the newspaper and also it's reading your own media or your own uh, ads. So yeah. now it, this is a very huge challenge because in a lot of companies, digital marketing is something like a world apart, you know, and it's not inside the whole business. So people that it's uh, achieving goals is the is the ones that are understanding that it's only one experience. So you have to focus on the kind of experience that you want to 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 build for your for your clients. Another typical one it's about checkout. Everybody's focusing in checkout, and checkout is failing. I have this million or source about traffic that is not working properly in checkout. I have this kind of device that is not working properly in checkout. And, and of course, checkout problems are very related with technology and how you are managing it to work uh, the right way in different devices or in different or in different channels. And and one thing that really I think it's a nightmare and 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 I hate because I don't understand how can I see these things in 2020. It's about the search experience. When you are trying to find a product inside a retailer or, or any kind of e-commerce, and you are, and you are using uh, the search box, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of very poor experiences about searching products or searching things using the. For, for me, it's something very important because if I cannot find yeah. a product. How am I going to buy it? So, so probably it's the first transaction and it's the most important one. Yeah, and often it's already poor on desktop, yes. let, let alone on mobile. Yes, I think typical typical mistake here, it's about uh, typo squaring and misspelling. So, you know, uh, we've been working uh, last years in, in a lot of in, in fashion. So it's very funny when you see that people is just uh, trying to find products and they don't know the name. They, yes, they know the name, but they don't know how to write it. For example, if you are looking for something like the expression high waist, here in Spain, uh, young people say, hey, I want my trousers in high waist, you know, but you know how to say high waist, but you don't know how to write it. Yeah. So when you are a Spanish guy and you are trying to look for high waist trousers, they really don't know how to write high waist. So every a lot of misspelling, a lot of typo squatting, so what the search uh, engine does for them, zero results. And probably you have 100 or 200 trousers with high waist. So 
this is just a, a, an example, but it happens a lot of times, a lot of times. And if I cannot find a product, I'm not going to buy it. For over 10 years now, Online Dialogue advises about evidence-based conversion optimization with a focus on data and psychology. We see that analyzing data and recognizing customer behavior results in a better online dialogue with your clients and a higher ROI. The team of strategists, analysts, psychologists and UX specialists gathers valuable insights in the online behavior of your visitors and together with you they optimize the different elements of your CRO program through redesign, expert reviews, A-B tests and behavioral analysis. For more information about their services, go to onlinedialogue.com. Yeah, usually the, the the search queries on your own website that's that's usually a, a treasure a treasure trove for for zero yeah yes but they are but they you have to track them and of course you have you have to take a look on them yeah because, <laughs> because if you are tracking them and and you never look for that data but uh, I really love that field of work uh, about information architecture and navigation paths and of course uh, search queries because in our experience, it's a very, very uh, important point uh, to work to work on. Doesn't matter if, if yeah. let's think of it, 100% of the people is seeing the search box. And, and a lot of people is, is, is very, it's very comfortable using that because we are very used to use Google or other kind of, of, of search engines. So it's a natural behavior right now. So please just give them a very, <laughs> A normal experience if when they are searching for something because if I if I'm looking for something and you tell me that you have zero results I will move to your competitor. Yeah, I, th I think when my uh, girlfriend is, is uh, shopping on mobile for anything related uh, clothing for for our little kid, I think that the first thing she looks for on any website is just a search box. She doesn't even try the main menu or something. Just go to the search box. Um, because it, it it feels like it, that's the fastest way to figure out are they actually uh, providing what I'm looking for, and that's the first transaction. Yeah. And and if you are not able to solve the first transaction, what about the rest? Probably they don't mean you know. So so that's a very typical pitfall, and it's very uh, very urgent to solve. And now we have a lot of technology uh, to make such experience something really good. But the main problem is that a lot of companies just implement the e-commerce CMS, like Magento, like PrestaShop, or WooCommerce. Yeah. And they are using the search engines that comes with the CNS, and they only work with uh, a specific tax. Yeah. So if you don't write exactly the right word, my result will be zero. Yeah. So so we have a big problem here. And that's something that you have to focus on solving because it's a yeah. very important part of any conversion process. Yeah, like you said, people are, are used to using search boxes uh, so much these yes. days with uh, with Google. And Google always has a result and uh, you always uh, will find at least something. Uh, so the assumption, I think, is also if, if there's no result, they probably don't have it. Even if I misspell it, yep. and I do that on an e-commerce store, if I misspell something in Google, I still get results, I get suggestions, whatever. There will be results, whatever I type in. Uh, and if you expect the same in an e-commerce store, just type in anything and there's no result, people don't bother going through a menu, going back, uh, trying different, uh, all kinds of different things if they don't believe anymore that you even have the product. Yeah, that, you're completely right. That's, uh, that's, yeah. but, but it's something very, very important. And sometimes in some zero projects, people is focusing on checkout yeah. or in selling, hey, please, just take a, take a, take a step back because your problem is not in your checkout. Yeah. Your problem yeah. is that I'm looking for something and I cannot find it. So that, that's a real problem. Yeah. I always try to 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 be uh, clear with my clients, and I, and, and I always say the, the same the same story. Is this is like if I'm going inside a store and I ask uh, to to some people that is working there, hey, please, where can I find this product? And they don't say anything to me. That's what you are doing. Exactly. Yeah. Not not saying not saying here is not the place. Please go out. No, you are saying. Nothing. No, it just not respond. It's very rude. Yeah, it's very rude. Yeah, <laughs> but it's but it's true. It's not what they are doing. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you just um, um, a couple of minutes ago you said okay, people um, at the intermediate or or the lower level they maybe they know the tools and they they play around with it, but they don't exactly know what to do. Or the example you just mentioned that people focus too much on one part of the customer journey, like checkout, 
uh, and don't look at, at, at other things. So how, how do you approach this when you encounter this at, at, uh, at those companies? How do you how do you train those people um, and, and embed that zero mindset at the company? Well, oof, I always have to face the, 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 a question that it's very typical and it's very hard they, because they always ask what kind of, uh, 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 what amount of money or what kind of uh, performance am I going to win or am I going to aim <laughs> yeah. if I work with you? Sounds very familiar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. And I always say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, well, I cannot promise you anything because I really don't know. Yeah. So uh, w- what I can promise you is that we are going to use a methodology in order to uh, achieve some goals. But I don't know what uh, what measure. I don't know if we will uh, perform 30% better, 5%, 80%. Yes, I really, I really don't know. We always uh, uh, we always start the same way. So if we have an... an a previous approach in the inception, and we have a previous analysis, we always find 15, 20, 25 pitfalls, some things that uh, has to be solved. Some of them, because we found some heuristic pitfalls, talking about UX or usability, and sometimes because we find some pitfalls just uh, taking a look, uh, a deeper look into, into analytics. So we always propose a roadmap. I, and uh, 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 a first roadmap. So this is the things that we are going to do, and this is the order in that we are going to do. So please let us know if you agree with us or not, because maybe uh, what I think is the most important thing for you, you can say, hey, you are putting this in the first place, and for me it's the fourth or the fifth, because in business I need uh, all the things before. So we always start with this pack, of uh, 20, 25 things that we have, we find we have to fix. Most of them comes from UX heuristics or, uh, or not general best practices, but best practices, yeah. specific business best practices, you know? So this is how we start. Sometimes we move into testing, sometimes not. If this is something that is heuristic or this is a UX pitfall or this related to UI, uh, we move directly into a fix. That's how you work, but how do you uh, get your clients on the level that they can do the work themselves or at least uh, get a better understanding of what, what you are doing? How do, how do you train your clients? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know your experience, but for us it's easy because we don't have to train because people come with, with the idea of uh, I want to improve my performance yeah. and, and some people have told me about you. So, so, so we really don't have to train people so much because they really have a very good expectation about what they can expect. So, and also, and I have to be very honest here, and also we sometimes uh, don't want to work with uh, some kind of clients. Mm-hmm. If you are expecting results in two or three months, we are not the company you need to work with, you know? If you, if you are always with the word urgent or with the word tomorrow in your mouth, maybe we are not the best company uh, for you because business results don't come in 24 hours. Now, if you, if you want results in 24 hours, you just need to spend uh, a lot of uh, Put all your money on AdWords and traffic and then uh, just fingers crossed, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I'm, I'm sure you, you have, you have uh, listened about this a lot of times, but I... Uh, most uh, conversion problems wants to be solved with traffic, yeah. and that's and that's not the way. No. If you want to sell more, of course, the first thing you can do is just to spend more money. Yeah, but that's what that's what a lot of companies do, right? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's what a lot of them do. And now this is something that 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 is about uh, improving your performance. So so you have to you have to to have a look on the strategic part of it and also in the tactics one of course. But uh, uh, I really don't have to train so much my 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 clients right now because uh, I think we started when we started yes we 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 had to do that but now it's not the case because most of the people comes because they have some references about our work yeah. or they know people that has been working with us in the last years and 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 they come with a very good expectation for our side. And as I told you, when we hear some clues that this is a very 
toxic client for us. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to go into that project. And if you need to train people, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Go read that first. Yeah, but I think that uh, it's a very, uh, I want to be so honest, so it's a very uh, nice commercial action to write a book. You don't do it for money. No. Because you are not going to earn uh, money. The, the people who earn money writing books are the people who's writing novels. Yeah, yeah. And you, you write 20 novels, then, then you start making money, I guess. Yes. That, not from yeah, just that's one. True. But with this kind of stuff, uh, you really come to be someone confidence for a lot of people. And of course, they read your book. And some of them, not all, but some of them, of course, you also will have some haters but 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 sure some of them will call you you can say hey i have read your book and i think this is very useful for my company so that's why i tell you that we don't have to train people because they they come training yeah. you know uh, and, and also that was very important in the in the books from the beginning is i'm only writing about projects i've been working i'm not writing about the nasa i'm not writing about <laughs> apple Or I'm not writing about Amazon because I've never worked for, for any of those three. Maybe one day, maybe one day, but not today. So I'm only writing about projects that we've been working for in the last years. And I think that's very useful because this is not about, hey, take a look about what Amazon did. Hey, man, you've never been working in Amazon. How do you know that? Because you've been reading a lot of blog posts. It's the same thing that anyone can do. So, so we are only talking from experience, and I think that's the that's the that, that's the most important thing we can do. Yesterday's brainstorm was so good. I really liked Steph's idea of running that test on the call to action buttons. Making them orange will really make them stand out, don't you think? Yeah, right. Do you want to design real A/B test winners and achieve enormous conversion uplift? Then stop brainstorming and take a scientific approach. If you can read Dutch, follow the steps in Online Influence, the bestseller on managementbook.nl. Or enroll in the author's course and become an expert in applying proven behavioral science yourself. Go to onlineinfluence.com for more information and free downloads. Well, speaking of that experience, I would I would love to know. So you you have the you have the business now for seven years. Yes, and uh, you've you've done uh, digital for for longer than that. Mm -hmm. What were your biggest fuck ups or your biggest assumptions that you have? Maybe about client work that you said shit. So if, if I had known that seven or ten years ago, that would have life much easier. What are the, what are the things that went wrong? I think I think that something that it's very hard to learn, and as uh, fast as you learn, it is better well for you is in what kind of clients you never have to work. You never have to work because each one of us, sure, it's very good doing some things. And some clients and some people, it's ready uh, to pay for it and they will be happy with your services. But uh, you really need to know as soon as possible who is your real target, not everyone. Because I think one of my main mistakes as anyone that starts running a business is a, hey, I need clients. So I need clients now. Anyone. So <laughs> anyone, yeah. yeah. Anyone is good for me. You have money, you are going to pay me. You are a very good client for me. And that's not true. So, so what, what, made you, what made you a better selector of clients? Well, I started reading a book uh, that one of my partners uh, gifted me and it's called The Undisciplined Purchase of Less. Uh, the author is you of my Keon. And it's a book about saying no. Yeah. You know, it's a book. It's a book about hey, you don't have to say yes to everything. So, so you also have to to learn how to say no to your clients. And it was very useful for me because in the beginning we have some problems because we were working with people that was very happy with our services and with people that was very angry. And I say, hey, this is not what's what's going wrong here. So the yeah. so in. Across the years, I, I identify several things that, uh, for me, it's like an alarm ringing, you know, so you don't want. The first one is about lack of briefing, you know? Mm -hmm. So your only briefing is that somebody is writing to you and saying, hey, I want to improve my performance. That's all your briefing. Yeah. Hey, if you don't have the time to look inside your business, to know your own business, to know what is going wrong, And you don't take, and you don't want to take the time to explain me the right way. What do you expect from me? That's a very bad signal. Yeah. The other one, it's about time. 
So I want to improve, but I want to improve next month, or I want to improve tomorrow, or I want to improve in two weeks. That's not that's not real. The other one is budget. So some people is saying, hey, I want to sell 1 million euros next year. This year I'm selling 100,000, but I have the same resources and the same budget for everything. So mm, this is a little uh, difficult, you know? And this is something more subjective, but it's also about feeling. This is a work based on relations. Yeah. So you really need to have a good relation with your client. And if you don't have that feeling, probably it's not a good idea to work together. Yeah. And the other one, it's, uh, it's people who is writing you or proposing you some kind of partnership. You know, they say, hey, if you improve my business this way, I will give you 20% of my business. So I always say, hey, I will never give you part of my business if I believe in it. Yeah. Never. <laughs> so, so mm, you know what I mean? So I think this, these things are typical errors that we, uh, that, that we always uh, take in the first steps. But it's very important to learn how to fix them uh, as soon as you can. So the, the red flags are... Uh, short, short or no briefing, uh, short time span uh, or expectancy of, uh, of of results, the budget itself, and if they offer a partnership, just run. <laughs> yes, 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 and, and and also the kind of uh, the kind of of relation we have the, the first conversation, you know, and and this is I think that those are the main red flags for me. Yeah, I always say that I'm not your best option. Sure, in the market, you have options that fix your needs, understand. But in, in my case, I, for me, it's really hard to understand that you don't take five single minutes to explain to me how is your business and how it goes. Just a line, yeah. you know, just a line. Exactly. So yeah. for me, that's a very, a, a very hardcore red flag. And, and uh, even outside of your, even outside of these, uh, these uh, points, um, do you already... Do you already have a feeling about the business, whether it's a good client or not, based on the on the vertical they're in, the business that they are in? Uh, is if it maybe yeah, B two B or B two C is very generic, but uh, do you already see? Okay, this is B two B. They are doing uh, uh, dishwashers. Uh, they're doing it this way. They have, they're an established company. What are what are red flags or uh, maybe even positive signs? Uh, just just based on the on the business model. For, for your zero work? Well, here we have a very ethical uh, part of the company. So we don't work for some kind of business. Mm -hmm. So we don't work for the sexual industry, Yeah. for example. We don't like to work, uh, or we don't work in gambling, or we don't work in what I call in Spanish, I don't know the word in English, where it's a, a pyramidal structure. A pyramid game. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, yeah. but this is something about uh, the company called the, the, the company culture. Yeah. So we don't feel comfortable with it for, for just the way we thought or our ethical about B2B or B2C or these washers. I always say that maybe you know, we are now working with a company that design builds ovens mm -hmm. and they sell it worldwide. And and it's a business. So like four for pizza? Or? No, <laughs> they are. Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like the kind of ovens that they use in the hospitals, jails, uh, schools. All these kind of very big ovens ah, okay, yeah. that you can yeah that that you can manage to make food for five hundred people or 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 two thousand, and they are selling it and the, and they are selling it across the internet. Okay. I think there are there are no real boundaries. The problem is. The, it's much more about the expectations you have. Yeah. If you have never been selling an oven online, you cannot be in the point that saying, hey, the next year I will sell 1 million ovens. Yeah. Okay, what what amount of ovens have you sold this year? Zero. Yeah. So you want to move from zero to 1 million just like a miracle. This is something that it's not going to, to happen. But I really like to be involved in, in, in industries where I've never been before. So this is the thing that I really love about my job, that I uh, have had the chance of learning about a lot of business models, business to business, business to consumer, administration to administration, uh, boof, uh, a, a, a lot of them. But I think that now 
we have the chance to improve any kind. I'm completely true. Any kind of business in, in digital. Absolutely any kind. There are no boundaries right now. And I think that the people that are it's, uh, building some technical stuff, some technical, some strange technical stuff in their in their garage, yeah. can can sell it across the across the world if if, if things are done the proper way yeah. and with the time. I think the problem is always the same. It's about time and resources, and part of the resources is time. Things are not going to happen fast because you want it to happen fast. <laughs> exactly. Everything everything needs time. A baby needs nine months. It's not going to be born in five months. Also, you want it. Yeah. You know. You know what I mean. But it's uh, but but it's, this is very typical mindset that some companies have. Yeah. You you can you cannot always uh, move things faster just to throw more, by throwing more money or more people. Uh, yeah. To it. Of, of course, if you have all the money in the world. Probably you can boost everything. But 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 it's still going to take nine months to build a baby. No no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's How, true. Yeah. However much money you have, <laughs> yes. No, yeah, that's true. But I think that's 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 a great mindset uh, to uh, to end our talk with. Uh, you, we can we can optimize anything. I mean, uh, uh, ethics uh, aside, we can have our uh, restrictions there, of course, uh, and and we should uh, as an industry, I think. Uh, but uh, we can improve anything. Yes, um, and and also we always have to think that there there is a, a economical classical law that was. Uh, uh, that was developed by David Ricardo and Malthus. And I don't know how to say in English, but it's uh, it's uh, la ley de los rendimientos decrecientes. It, it's a law that say that also you input a lot of resources in something, you are not going uh, to achieve same proportion of outputs. So that's a classical economical law yeah. from the I think 18th century. I think, and that's completely true. You cannot uh, you cannot improve everything to a 100 percent uh, success rate. That's not possible. So 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 you always have to be clear about the amount of performance uh, that that a company can has because it's not real to say that you are going to sell at 100 percent level. Yeah. So time, resources, and also this kind of stuff. Thanks for sharing us uh, your your experience with uh, Zero, and uh, yeah, good luck with uh, the the promotion and and the sales of the of the second book, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, we will definitely link to those uh, in the in the in the show notes. We will link to those uh, books for those the, that can read Spanish, uh, <laughs> and for those that don't. Uh, maybe maybe just do a course on Spanish and then, and then transition into this uh, this book. Uh, that will be a great start. I mean, you know already you already know the, all the terms in CRO, so that's, there's a lot of English terms are in the book. Yes. I assume. Yes, right? yes, so, <laughs> yeah, that's that's all everything. That's easy. all everything in English. You only have to make the relation in one word from another, just in Spanish. Exactly. But 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 the main <laughs> terms are in English, of course. Thank you so much, uh, Ricardo. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. Best of luck to you, and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. And this concludes season two, episode 40 of the Zero Cafe podcast with Ricardo Tahar from Flat 101. And again, make sure to share this with your colleagues if you like the content, especially when you work at an agency. Next Monday in another episode, we switch to the client side when I talk with e-commerce conversion manager Dave Powell from TomTom. And we're going to learn how they quickly switch gears when the pandemic hits and basically a lot of people simply stop driving. Talk to you then and always be optimizing.